Okay, hi. Indeed, I'm going to talk about how to construct constant run concurrent zero knowledge from I.O. And interestingly, our construction will make use of a special purpose delegation scheme for P, which is some succinct argument for P. So this kind of shows an interesting connection between the two types of arguments, the zero knowledge ones and the succinct ones. So for the entire talk, I'm not going to care about concrete run complexity, but if you care to know, our protocol can be compressed into six rounds. And also let me say straight away that I will only talk about computational zero knowledge, argument systems, and the plain model constructions only. Okay, so let's begin. So zero knowledge protocols is fundamental and it enables a prover to prove about the validity of a statement without revealing anything else. And this property is captured through the simulation paradigm, which requires that everything the verifier sees when talking to an honest prover, its view, can be simulated efficiently using a simulator that knows only the statement itself. A very, very natural extension of zero knowledge, the first one you could think of, is that what if the verifier receives more than one proofs? And in particular, he could control how the messages are scheduled in all those proofs. And in this case, in order to say that the verifier still learns nothing, we need to require that there exists a simulator that can efficiently simulate the joint view in all different sessions. And generically, there are two types of simulation in general, the black box version and the non-black box version. So the black box version is the simpler and the weaker one. It restricts the simulator to be a to can only make black box calls to the cheating verifier. Whereas the non-black box simulation does not place any restriction, and in particular, the simulator can make use of the code of the verifier itself. Okay, so what do we know about concurrent zero knowledge? Well, for zero knowledge, we know constant round construction from one-way function, and that has black box simulation. On the other hand, the concurrent knowledge just seems to be harder to achieve because the best protocol with a black box simulation has logarithmic rounds. And in fact, this is essentially tight because of a matching lower bound. So therefore, a central question that our uh, we care about is whether we can get a constant round concurrent zero knowledge that necessarily to circumvent the lower bound, we we'll have to use non-black box simulation. In recent years, a couple construction emerged, however, using very strong assumptions. For example, using knowledge of exponent type extractability assumption, or using public coin different input IO, which itself is an extractability assumption. Or using a new assumption called a P certificate, which is basically some non-interactive delegation for P. So far, we don't know of any construction. The only candidate is Michali's CS proof, essentially. So in this work, we show that, in fact, I.O. suffices if given together with collision resistant hash function and a one-way permutation. All primitives have slightly super polynomial security. Okay. So, as I said already, towards constructing constant round concurrent zero knowledge from I.O., our construction make use of a special purpose delegation for P. More concretely, what we need is what we call this two-round unique P certificate. So let me tell you what they are. Okay? They're basically two-round succinct argument for P that have unique proofs. Okay? So an argument system for P is proving about those statements that looks like a machine M on input X outputs Y in T steps. And to prove such a statement, the verifier and the prover each send one message. The succinctness requirement is that both of their messages are very short, of length of fixed polynomial, independent of the length of the statement nor the complexity of the statement. The efficiency of the verifier depends only on the length of the statement, whereas the prover naturally will have to run in time at least the runtime of the computation itself. So the special property that we actually require with respect to such succinct argument is the uniqueness property. What we want is that for any statement, no, ma no matter it's true or false, and any verifier's first message, there exists at most one accepting proof, at most one. 
And that's all. That's what we need. And in the construction coming up next, it is convenient to think about as a mental experiment that we actually have an even stronger tool, which is a non-interactive unique P certificate, which is everything the same except that there is no verifier's first message. We just have in one shot a succinct proof that is unique. And indeed, this is the approach that we will go towards constructing constant run concurrent zero knowledge that we will do two steps. In the first step, we're constructed using the non-interactive unique P certificate, and then we will show that, in fact, the two-round version suffices. What I won't have time to tell you about today is how to construct these two-round unique P certificates from I.O., which I will leave you to refer to the paper. Okay, so let's start. So our starting point, not surprisingly, is Brock's non-black box zero knowledge protocol. So let's see what it is. It doesn't matter if you care about concurrent zero knowledge or not, I think Brock's protocol is beautiful on its own to know. Okay. So to begin, the prover sends a commitment of either zero or some machine M to the verifier. The verifier responds very simply with a very long random challenge, much longer than the commitment itself. And finally, the prover proves using a witness indistinguishable proof that either the statement he's trying to prove is true or he has actually committed to a program in the first message. And in fact, for this program, there is a very short input that makes it outputting the challenge R. Here by short, it means the length of this input needs to be much shorter than the length of the random challenge, at least by the security parameter. And here we we'll actually make use of a very succinct commitment and the WI proof. And we can think about the total length of their messages is N. So to understand the Brock's protocol a little bit better, we can see that the protocol actually consists of two half. The left half, which is the honest half, and the right half, that's a trapdoor half. So obviously, the honest half is going to be used by the honest prover using a real witness, which is what he were doing in actual uh, proof, whereas the trapdoor half is only there so that the simulator can cheat using some fake witness that will have to consist of the machine M and then input E. So despite the fact that there exists this trapdoor, the soundness of the protocol still holds. Why? Because a cheating prover, in order to prove a false statement, must use the trapdoor half, and to do that, he needs to commit to the program before the random challenge R is even chosen. And then it's information theoretically to guess such a program that on a very short input can predict this very long random challenge, and therefore soundness holds. On the other hand, the simulator doesn't need to guess. He knows about the code and the random coins of the verifier, therefore can simply come up with a fake witness which sets the machine to be the verifier V star itself and the input to be the first commitment message. Let's verify that this is, this is indeed a good fake witness. First of all, the commitment is very short because it's succinct. And this machine V star on input the commitment by definition, has to output the random challenge. That's just a tautology. Okay? Therefore, the simulator can cheat. Great. This is a beautiful idea. Unfortunately, this idea fails when we go to the concurrent setting. Let's see why. Here, the verifier is receiving more than one proof, and the Brock simulator will try to, let's look at the, the case proof. The Brock simulator is going to commit to the verifier's code and attempts to prove in the final WI that the V star on some short input is going to output the challenge in this session, which is RK. Then, again, by definition, this input V star takes has to be all the message it has received before it outputs RK. Unfortunately, in the concurrent setting, this message's length is unbounded. It could be very, very long, much, much longer than the length of the random challenge. Therefore, the simulation doesn't go through. A potential fix to this problem is that, well, why do we have to commit to the verifier's code? Let's instead commit to the simulator's code itself. The idea being that in the simulation, everything is generated by the simulator himself. 
Therefore, in the WI, we should be able to prove that the simulator on no input at all will be able to produce RK. Okay, then our problem should be solved. Unfortunately, this introduces a new problem, which is the simulation time blows up. So to see this, let's consider the time for the simulator that it takes until it outputs RK, and let's call it TK. And look at the WI that he needs to generate, and the time for generating it, let's call it T prime K. Simply by the fact that in order to prove a statement, we have to pay at least as long as the runtime of the statement itself. Therefore, we know T prime K is bigger than T K. Now, imagine that we have a further level of nesting where there is a K plus one session that encloses entirely the K session. The time for the simulator to generate the challenge in that session, TK plus one, is at least twice TK. Now, the runtime blow up exponentially. Okay. Great, how can we solve this problem? Well, using a strong tool called the unique P certificate. Let's see how we can use unique P certificate to circumvent this problem. So the protocol is going to stay more or less the same as before, except that it will have a different trapdoor statement. And this trapdoor statement, instead of requiring that M takes a very short input, it will require M to take a very structured input, but long. What is the structure? The input itself is going to consist of a list of P certificates, and each of them is proving about some partial execution of the machine M itself. In particular, the ith one pi i will prove that the machine M on all the P certificates before it is going to output some string ri. And then finally, we'll use another P certificate pi to prove that this machine M on this structured input indeed outputs the challenge in this session r. So now with this new trapdoor statement, we need to verify again that something still holds. And the reason that it holds is that even though the input now could be very long, it's so structured, and by the uniqueness property of the P certificate, this list of P certificates is essentially inductively determined by the machine M itself. Why? Because they're all proving about some partial execution of M. If it is uniquely determined by M, then even though it's very long, it becomes useless. And this is essentially why soundness still holds. And let's see why simulation still holds. Now, our simulator is going to consist of two components. The component S, just as before, that will simulate verifier, uh, prover's message for the cheating verifier. And a new component S, component S prime, which does nothing else except from generating a bunch of appropriate P certificates. And the case one is going to prove that the simulator S on input or the previous P certificate it receives from S prime is going to produce the challenge in the case session. Now, given those P certificates, the simulator S can simulate everything by committing to its own code as before and proving the WI that he has the right P certificate to certify the computation of the committed program. Great, why are we doing all of this complicated stuff? Let's see that why now the simulation time is tamed. In particular, we look at the time that needed for generating the final WI. Okay. And here, the runtime again is going to be polynomial in the runtime of the statement it is trying to prove. And now, luckily, the statement only consists of verifying a bunch of P certificates. And the verification of the P certificate is short and of some polynomial runtime. Therefore, the simulator runs in polynomial time and there is no time blow up anymore. Okay, so great. <laughs> Given this very strong, unique P certificate, we can indeed get a constant round of concurrent zero knowledge. Unfortunately, this is so strong that we don't really know how to construct it. So we have to get by with something weaker, which is a two-round version. Okay. The basic idea is what's so different with the two-round version? Well, the verifier 
should just send the first message, uh, the verifier's first message for the P certificate, and then we'll have to modify the trapdoor statement again so that inside the trapdoor statement, every P certificate is verified with respect to some first message. And we have to be very careful with doing that because we do not want to lose the uniqueness property of the P certificate. And in particular, for all the P certificates in the input, it will be verified with respect to some first message of the P certificate that is produced itself by the machine M. And therefore, inductively, again, that all the P certificate no matter the first message or the actual proofs, are all uniquely determined by the machine M itself, and therefore, we again have the soundness. Unfortunately, it seems like everything is great, this idea should work. Unfortunately, it fails at a much more fundamental level. The problem with it is that the verifier, in fact, simply cannot generate the first message itself. Why? Because remember that the first message of the P certificate needs to be generated knowing the statement it is trying to prove. Unfortunately, what is the statement? The statement is the committed machine M together with an input to it, which is, has to be hidden away from the verifier for the zero knowledge property to hold. Therefore, the verifier doesn't know. And another reason is that the first message of the P certificate can take in time proportional to the length of the statement to generate. And the length of the statement could again be arbitrary polynomial, which is way beyond the capability of the verifier again. Therefore, the simple idea doesn't work. And here again, the delegation comes to help us. To circumvent this problem, what we will do is that instead of letting the verifier generate the first message himself, he's going to, in fact, delegate this job to the prover to generate. And in particular, this is going to require us to use FHG plus IO to achieve. Uh, a small observation is that when actually in the, our paper, when plugging our particular construction of P certificate from IO, we can avoid the usage of FHE and only rely on IO for this delegation step. OK, great. So in summary, we get constant round concurrent zero knowledge using those unique P certificates. We can do with the non-interactive version, and even better, we can do with the non-interactive two-round version, which itself can be constructed from IO. And in fact, in our proof can be generalized to even more non-interactive versions, which doesn't have to be too round as long as every prover's message is unique. Okay. And uh, that's all what I want to tell you. Thank you.